All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So we have some big news taking place in the crypto space right now. We're talking about XRP in this video. What's happening with SBI holdings that we have to be ready for with XRP being used for cross-border payments, the future of Japan by 2025. Also, ETF news, what just happened with the Fed, the SEC preparing for ETF approvals, and what the next few weeks and few months are going to look like in the crypto market with this dip with the amount of leverage traders being wiped out, how much leverage is left to clear off the table before we go camp it on the beaches of the moon. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, comment 777 if you're feeling bullish, let's run it. All right, welcome back to the channel. So first and foremost, there's been a major warning with Ledger Wallet being compromised with their connection. And Jacob Canfield posted this on Twitter saying, do not connect to anything or your wallet could be drained. The best thing to do is nothing and connect to no website. Do not try and log into your ledger and all of the D apps that use ledger and a D app is just simply a decentralized app that uses ledgers connectivity kits had their code replaced with this to drain people's wallets. And so people asking questions like are, are our wallets safe if we don't connect to ledger while this is happening, the whole concept of ledger is that you can't get hacked when your physical device is not activated. And yes, your wallet should be safe. It's the decentralized apps that use Ledger connectivity kit that have been exploited. Instead of connecting to the decentralized apps, you'll be connecting to a malicious contract that will drain your Ledger. And the exploit reportedly prompts users to connect their wallets via a pop-up, which then triggers the token drainer. And it's referring to the false prompt that would in fact gain access to your wallet or any wallet. So don't interact with any dApps. And so you know, lots of people have been losing money. This person lost $610,000 drain. That absolutely sucks. And so if you have Ledger Live or the app, Live Ledger on your app, does that mean if I plug my physical hardware wall on my computer, am I in danger now? And it looks like it's been fixed. Ledger Live wasn't affected. So hopefully you guys weren't affected. You know, obviously got to stay, stay on alert out there, especially with the amount of impersonators as well too. There's a lot of impersonators in the comments. So don't fall for it, guys. We'll never ask you to message us on WhatsApp or Telegram and the official links that we have for anything, any social medias are in the description below this video. They're not in the comments. So don't go down the comments and start responding to people. So let's dive in and let's talk about what's happening on the charts right now. And specifically too with ICP, we see ICP internet computer breaking out $6.40. The next range that I talked about in previous videos that we're watching is anywhere between $8 all the way upwards of $9.60 that I could see ICP cooling off at. You know, as we push higher, if Bitcoin continues to trend higher and we see ICP push within this range, um, we could see it consolidate here. If we don't see a rejection um, with a correction for Bitcoin that I'm going to be talking about in this video, I believe ICP is uh, going to make some massive moves this year. Whereas XRP is sitting at 62 cents still, you know, we're still watching uh, the support at 55 cents for XRP if we see a continuation of the downside. Otherwise, we need to break this descending resistance on the upside to have any any chance of retesting 90 cents or even 74 cents anytime soon. If we can break to the upside, the next move for XRP is gearing up to be massive, but you know, we're still waiting for the news. That's why diversification is key. Waiting for the, not for the news, waiting for the event on the charts to take place and for actual price performance, for price action. Because SBI Holdings, a major partner of Ripple Labs in Japan, has partnered with Saudi Aramco, which is the world's second largest company by market capitalization. This partnership marks a massive step in SBI's strategic expansion in the Middle East, focusing on digital asset investments and the support of crypto startups. And SBI Holdings has agreed, you know, with uh, Saudi Aramco to establish a new venture to foster the growth of digital assets and related startups over in Saudi Arabia. And this collaboration aligns with SBI's broader vision of embracing digital transformation in financial services. And the alliance will leverage Saudi Aramco's significant market presence in SBI's and XBI's expertise in digital finance, creating a formidable force in the digital landscape. And so what the partnership is focusing on in the digital asset space is to extend the construction of semiconductor factories over in Saudi Arabia and Japan. And the move indicates SBI's commitment to diversifying their portfolio, obviously. Additionally, their SBI's uh, alliance with Circle, which is the issuer of the USDC stablecoin, you know, their commitment to modernizing Japan's financial landscape the partnership is aiming to enhance the utility of USDC over in Asia. And also, guys, a big thing too to note is for the future of cross-border payments over in Japan, back in 2022, 
Uh, Yoshida Kitao, who's the CEO of SBI Holdings, stated and predicted that all banks in Japan will be using XRP by 2025. And so he's a strong supporter of XRP and believes that it has the potential to revolutionize the global payment system. And SBI is one of the largest investors in Ripple. They invested $100 million in Ripple. And the two companies have been working together to promote the use of XRP in Japan and around the world. And so this is inevitable. It's only a matter of time. It's just frustrating to sit here while the price action does nothing. But just know that you know over the next few years, XRP is going to be one of the biggest performers. And again, don't buy XRP. Don't sell any XRP. It's not financial advice. It's all informational purposes only, leaving it up for you guys to do your own research. But the future is looking bright. And the Bank of Japan has been more cautious, though, about XRP. But it has also been exploring the potential of digital currencies. In 2021, during the, the last bull market, the Bank of Japan launched their two-year pilot uh, project to test the use of CBDC currencies. And so as we see these CBDCs roll out, it's possible that the Bank of Japan's CBDC could be interoperable with XRP, which would allow banks in Japan to use XRP to settle payments with each other and with banks in other countries. And it obviously would be a massive boost for XRP in Japan. As you guys know, when the lawsuit hit, you know, the, the growth in XRP while they were going through the lawsuit with the SEC, I mean, they still are, but it's all, it's pretty much over. We're just waiting for the announcement on how much um, Ripple is going to pay in the settlement agreement. But when XRP grew, that was because of Japan. That was because of Asia. That was because of you know Saudi Arabia, Dubai, the other countries that could still trade XRP. It wasn't from the United States because it was delisted in Coinbase. And so Edgrad Crypto just posted this. XRP Valhalla, the ultimate summoning, the most bullish cross just occurred as predicted. The 21 EMA finally crossed the 55 moving average on the two-week time frame. And this basically led the past few times that this happened was a massive eruption in the price. I mean, the, the first time was back in 2017 when the price went from like 0 0.005 upwards of you know 30 cents, then eventually three bucks. And then the, the time after that was when XRP, you know, right before the lawsuit in December, you know, rallied from you know 20 cents upwards of of almost two bucks. And so the next the next move for XRP is gonna be big. You just gotta be ready. And so for me, you know, I'm not day trading XRP. I'm not like getting in and getting out. I'm just personally, I'm just holding XRP long term. You know, that's my strategy because you know, I don't need to day trade it trying to get little tiny gains of a few hundred or a few thousand dollars off of day trades. You know, I'm, I'm holding for uh, generational wealth long term for years and I'm diversifying with passive income into other projects that I believe in because with BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, you know, inviting participation from Wall Street banks, they changed the structure of their proposal through the spot Bitcoin ETF to enable authorized participants or APs in this case to create new shares in the fund with cash rather than with only cryptocurrencies. So this is essentially opening the door to banks who cannot hold crypto directly. And so BlackRock recently uh, made it so authorized participants, right, who's a vital part of the ETF ecosystem, they're going to be able to create new fund shares with cash. And as highlighted, you know, U.S. banks are unable to hold Bitcoin themselves. So this setup would enable the likes of J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs, you know, firms with some of the largest balance sheets in the world to act as APs to BlackRock's ETF. Whether they want to or not is another matter, you know, specifically Listen to what Jay, uh, Jamie Dimon, you know, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase had to say right here. I personally think that Bitcoin is worthless, but I don't want to be a spokesman. For it. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. I don't think you should smoke cigarettes either. Our clients are adults. They disagree. That's what makes markets. So if they want to have access to buy or sell Bitcoin, you know, we, it's hard. we can't custody it, but we can give them legitimate, as clean as possible access. This is how the rich get richer yes this right. is not illegal to do no um, manipulating the news cycle if yes. you're smart about it is is right. they can get away with it nobody's ever been arrested for anything so like on september 12th jamie diamond says bitcoin is a fraud he says he'll fire any one of his traders buying bitcoin bitcoin drops 24 percent when jamie diamond speaks people listen people listen so that weekend we found out that the largest buyer of a of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. He says he'll buy anyone that buys it. Yeah. And at the same time his company is buying. His it. company is buying it. 
so ir- it's just I mean so unethical. Right. So it's very interesting how you know these elite you know CEOs or people that own these massive financial companies or banks will say one thing to lead people in a certain direction, then do a completely different thing to divert you. So they can be able to back up the truck and load up their bags. And so whether they're investing directly in crypto or not, or their companies or their subsidiaries are investing in like Bitcoin mining companies or doing that is showing us that, you know, crypto is where people want to put their money and how, you know, the elite, they want to be able to accumulate the most at the best price. And so it only makes sense for them to try and scare people out of their positions and say things like, oh, it's illegal or it's rat poison or this, that, the other. But on investor.gov, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission listed crypto assets right here. And so on crypto assets, you can see all this information about crypto assets and, you know, them getting people ready and geared up to be educated on it when the ETFs are finally approved. And so the window for approval is coming up very, very soon, guys, less than a month. So you've been waiting for so long for this massive news to break. And Bitwise Asset Management has become the latest firm to have its spot Bitcoin ETF listed on the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation um, under the ticker BITB. And so Bitwise now joins Fidelity, whose spot Bitcoin ETF was listed last week. And although a spot Bitcoin ETF in the US is yet to face approval yet, you know, Matt Hogan, who's the chief investment officer at Bitwise, said that the team is preparing as though there's a there's going to be a launch. And he also stated, we're preparing the marketing and sales strategies and press and all those things. And we're working with regulators to try to push things ahead. And so Google is also going to be approving paid advertising at the end of January for, you know, crypto ads and gaming, play to earn gaming, blockchain gaming and all that stuff. So crypto is going to absolutely crush it once that starts to happen, because these companies are going to start pouring millions and millions of dollars for awareness for their projects. And that's just going to bring the retail money into the space. So the race for the spot Bitcoin ETF it's been heating up, and according to Bloomberg analysts, there's a 90% chance that the SEC will approve the Bitcoin ETF before January 10th, is what they're saying. And so the Fed just made the announcement with their FOMC statement that they were going to be holding the rate steady uh, for this this meeting this month, which we expected. You know, we went to the CME Fed Watch and we showed you guys that in one of the previous videos. And so because they're holding the rate steady, you know, the market saw a rally from that. We're currently sitting at $1.57 trillion in market cap within this range. And as you guys can see, the last range that we were in, you know, when we rallied up from the low of about $1 trillion, upwards of $1.4 trillion, we saw an 8.5% uh, correction. And then we stayed within this range for an extended period of time before breaking out. I mean, it was like 15 days, two weeks. And so anytime we shoot up massively in market cap for the whole industry, whether it be like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, um, the whole market, whatever, you know, what, when we see a dip, this this pullback it's not a correction it's just a simple pullback then we see a consolidation period for an extended period of time that could be two weeks it could be a month sometimes it could be three months you know so that's why this is more important than ever before to have a way to generate passive income so you could be able to accumulate the dip as we continue for the rest of this bull run so when we look right here if we see a consolidation period all the way through january until an etf approval um, January 10th would be 33 days. I could see something like that taking place. And then the ETFs get approved. Then we see a breakout. Then that hype kind of dies off. Then before Bitcoin's halving, we see a massive correction going into Bitcoin's halving where the markets, the markets take a, you know, much needed 20, 30, 40% correction rather than just a measly little eight or 10% pullback. Because during the last bull run, <clears throat> we saw, we saw a few of these corrections take place. But during the bull run before then, we saw, a bunch take place, you know, multiple periods where the markets would rally up, correct down 40%, consolidate sideways. This one was for 200 days, rally up, correct down about 38%, consolidate sideways for 181 days. Right here, this correction, we went up $20 billion in market cap, crashed down 35%, kind of rallied a little bit higher. But let's just say if we go to right here, 107 days, the next period rallied up, correct down, about 37% consolidate sideways for 52 days. You guys get the picture here, the bigger picture. So don't act surprised when the market see a 30% or a 40% pullback. Now, if we were to pull back from where we are right now, from the, the current high of like $1.6 uh, trillion in market cap, well, a pullback to 1.25 to this 
support, which was resistance back in April, would only be a 23% correction, only 23%. So what I would expect to happen is for us to push higher leading into the ETF approval, the ETFs to get approved, that to send the markets, you know, booming. Maybe we go upwards of, you know, 1.7, $1.8 trillion. Bitcoin hits a 618 retracement, maybe, uh, you know, up to a 712, wherever Bitcoin goes, but we push higher. And then we see the deeper pullback, you know, maybe 20%, 30%, 40% pullback. And depending on how high we go, then we'll determine where the support will lie into Bitcoin's having. So we have to be ready for that. And looking right here at total two, which is the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin. So this is all altcoins. We're holding this resistance as support that it was beneath for an extended period of time. You know, when we dropped off a shelf, we were below uh, about $700 billion for like 500, almost 555 days, somewhere around there. So if we can hold this as support, this zone right here and consolidate on it right now, and then see an ETF approval, I would expect the next rally up based on that approval and Google's advertising in January to shoot the market to 860 something billion dollars, even upwards of 900 or $1 trillion for all altcoins within this range before we see a deeper correction and a pullback, then consolidation going into Bitcoin's halving. And then after Bitcoin's halving, six months after Bitcoin's halving, then we start to work out of here to retest the high of 2021, which was $1.7 trillion. So guys, lots of money is going to flow into the altcoin market over the next two years leading into 2025. And then we're going to keep a watch on what the Fed's going to do. But over the next few meetings, the Fed's most likely just going to hold the rates steady you know, for the effective federal funds interest rates in the markets. Currently, the past few times that they've been doing that have been responding positively with them holding rates steady and has also been responding positively with them raising rates. And so the response of them cutting rates rapidly will only happen, you know, if or when, I guess we could say something breaks in the economy and they have to cut rates and issue QE. So the short term effect would be panic in the markets, a crash, but that's not going to be happening for a while. You know, we have through 2024 and the narrative right now is more bullish than bearish because of ETF approval, Google advertising, you know, the, the Fed's still paused on the rates. They're not going to be slashing things anytime soon. You know, so like a recession or depression is kind of being pushed back, which it's a little scary for investors that are just like wondering what's going to happen. So it creates that, that, you know, fear of uncertainty, right? But the, the greed is high too. So you also have to be careful because we're at 72 out of a, hundred on the crypto fear and greed index. So as we creep into extreme greed, as we push higher, you know, more leverage traders will need to be wiped off the table. As you guys can see the open interest, you know, that's been aggregated since the top of 2021 in terms of how much leverage is on the, on the table in billions of dollars and how much gets wiped off. When we see these periods where the markets rally up, we see the leverage get high and then we see it get wiped off the table. The rally comes back up, leverage gets high again, wiped off the table, Markets rally up, leverage gets high, wiped off the table. So recently, this rally up to $44,000 for Bitcoin, we saw the leverage get massive in $4.5 billion to basically reach the what it was at the, the peaks of these rallies back in the, the bull run. And so we saw that wiped off the table. Now, there's still a lot of leverage on the table that could bring us down to three, um, three billion, you know, three billion in leverage. Right now, we're at 3.7, so 760 million dollars in leverage still so that could bring bitcoin down to i mean we could see bitcoin drop to 38 39k in this in this short term you know consolidation period in this pullback right now but if we push higher if the leverage comes back up that will need to be wiped off the table and so we're not just going to keep pushing up and up and up and up and up eventually we're going to need a much deeper pullback that will bring the leverage back down to roughly 3 billion down here and then if you're looking at accumulating any projects in the markets, you want to be watching this right here as well, too. So when that pullback takes place, then the crypto fear and greed index will most likely go to neutral or it'll go to fear. And then that's when a lot of people are going to be entering the markets. And so that's what I'm expecting. That's what I'm excited for. And that's why we're backing up our truck to the bank, grabbing the bags, packing them and stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe the spending power of the dollar is going down in value. That's a fact based on inflation and blockchain tech, distributed ledger technology, Cryptocurrencies are going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, you know where we're going. We're going camping on the beaches of the moon. So I'll see you guys on the next video. If you want to discover our top altcoin picks 
and get early bird access to our financial education platform when that's live, then you can go to bullrunners.com, click the button on the page, put in your best email address. You'll be instantly subscribed to our video newsletter to receive breaking news updates just like this um, before the algorithm can push these videos to you so you can see what's going on because we like to give you the, the best to help you prepare for the worst that's yet to come in this economy. So I'll see you guys on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do. Stay bullish.